Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Mohanad, and today we're going to do a cardiovascular examination. First of all, you wash your hands and then you introduce yourself. My name is Mohanad. Uh, the privacy is ensured by closing the door. Uh, your wife is in that right? Yes. So I took the patient's data. Uh, and today we're going to do a cardiovascular examination that might include taking off your shirt and exposing the upper part of your body. Is that right with you? Yes. So I took the, uh, the, the patient's consent and explained the uh, procedure. First of all, you're going to lean on here on the bed. Uh, the bed is gonna be 45 degrees, so this is the, this is the posture he's gonna be in. And first of all, we're gonna see the appearance. The appearance, he doesn't look uh, ill, and the body is, is uh, fit, he doesn't look uh, obese nor uh, uh Also, his color is not pale. Uh, also, there are no deformities in there, and for the environment, there is nothing connected to him. Okay, now we're gonna start the pericardium examination. First of all, we're gonna check on the radial pulse. Can you do that to me? And uh, first of all, we're going to check on the rate of the radial uh, artery. I'm going to set the uh, set the watch until it reaches 15 seconds, uh, and count with the uh, and count the pulses, and then multiply it by four. It was 19 pulses per 15 seconds. Then we'll, we multiply it by four and it reaches six, uh, 76 per minute. Then we're gonna check on the rhythm of the radial pulse. Uh, the rhythm is regular. It doesn't show any abnormality. It is not irregular, irregular, nor regular, irregular. And then we're gonna start in the uh, checking on the characteristics of the, uh, of the, of the radial uh, pulse. First of all, I'm gonna check on the volume. While I am doing the uh, the volume uh, the volume test, I'm gonna see, uh, I'm gonna ask the patient to lean there, and see his JVB to check if it was normal or not. Then we're gonna check on the uh, on the collapsing pulse. The collapsing pulse. I'm gonna put my uh, my my f first hand on the uh, on the radial artery and the second hand on the end of the uh, on the forearm. And then I'm gonna start the uh, the the break uh, the the. Uh, yeah, make sure you don't uh, you don't put your hand on the brachial uh, on the brachial artery so that you don't get confused. Then I'm gonna do the collapsing pulse. I'm gonna raise the, the patient's hand. I don't feel any uh, shift of the in the uh, in the pulse, so it's normal. And then I'm gonna do the symmetry uh, the symmetry uh, check. I'm gonna put my two hands one one hand on the uh, on each uh, radial artery, and I'm gonna check there is no radio radial delay, so it's normal. Ideally, I would ask the examiner about the blood pressure of the patient, and it's going to be usually normal. Uh, then I'm going to ask the patient to take his shirt off. Can you take his shirt off? Yes. Starting with the inspection, I don't see any, uh, any scars, any scars indicating any uh, surgery before or any pacemaker implantation. There is no uh, extra, uh, bictus extravatum, and uh, there are no discolorations. Yes. Let's start with the palpation. First of all, we're going to palpate the apex feet. How do you locate the apex feet? First of all, we're going to locate the Lewis angle. You can feel it there. This is the, uh, the Lewis angle. You go to the left side of it, and then you feel the second rib. Uh, below that, you would feel the, uh, the second uh, intercostal space, and here is the third intercostal space. Here's the fourth intercostal space where you put your index, and here is the middle intercostal space where you put uh, your middle finger, or the fifth intercostal space, I'm sorry. And there is the sixth intercostal space where you put your ring finger. And then you go from uh, from this side, or the barosternal side, to the midclavicular side, where you can feel the uh, the pulse uh, or the beat in here. I can feel the beat uh, for now. But the, but some patients, they don't have the, the apex beat so high, so you ask them to, uh, to, to lean into the lateral side, where you can feel it more. You will feel the, the apex beat on the uh, middle finger. And now we're going to start with the thrills. But before we do that, we have to locate the the heart valves. First of all, we're going to locate the mitral valve, which is going to be in the midclavicular line on the fifth uh, intercostal space. On the same level, in the barosternal side, uh, there, there's going to be the tricuspid uh, valve. And then on the second intercostal space, you're going to find the uh, pulmonary uh, valve. And then on the on the left, uh, on the, the right side of the patient, you're going to find the aortic valve. 
Now we're gonna start uh, filling the thrills. We're gonna fill the murmurs if there is anything on the valves that we've explained its location before. In the mitral valve, tricuspid valve, pulmonary valve, the aortic valve. I don't feel any murmur, so it's normal. And then we're gonna start with the heaves, uh, and the heaves we're gonna put it in the on the middle uh, on the uh, barasternal uh, side. It's either like this or like this, your preference. So you're gonna uh, do this. If you feel any pulsing sensation, then it is abnormal, and that indicates a right ventricular uh, enlargement. But if there was nothing, then it's normal. The percussion is not uh, routinely done, but it's done when, when, the, when the doctor suspect any uh, pericardial effusion uh, in the patient. But I'm gonna do it just for the, uh, for learning, and that's it. Uh, and now so we're now we're going to start in the auscultation, but before that you have to localize the, uh, the carotid artery. You're going to put your, uh, your, your finger in here, and medial to the sternocleidomastoid, between the sternocleidomastoid and the Adam apple, you could feel the carotid pulse. Then you put the stethoscope in your ears, and you're going to put it in the, uh, on the pill to, feel, uh, to, to, to put the, uh, the stethoscope on the mitral valve. With the carotid and the, uh, the sounds I hear, I can now say that there is a, an S1 and S2 and they are preserved. Can you lean uh, into the lateral side? Keeping the, uh, the stethoscope on, uh, on its side, I can hear the, the same sounds. There is, uh, there is no change and there is no abnormalities. Changing it into the diaphragm, putting it into the, the same mitral valve for high pitched sound. S1 and S2 are preserved, there are no murmurs, and uh, there is no S3 and uh, S4 uh, sounds. The leaning laterally uh, was only for the mitral valve to, to hear it more, and now I'm going to auscultate the tricuspid valve, matching with the carotid artery to hear the S1. And now into the pulmonary valve, and now into the aortic valve. And only for the aortic valve, I'm going to ask the patient to lean forward. Can you lean forward? Okay. There is no change in the sound. And now I'm going to uh, auscultate the base of the lung. In the right, and then in the left. There are no crackles. Before we've checked on the bricordium, We've uh, checked on the upper extremity circulation by checking on the radial pulse. But now we're going to check on the lower extremity circulation. First of all, I'm going to uh, ask the patient, is that okay with you to expose the, uh, yes. the upper part of the leg? Okay. So now I'm going to push firmly on the tibia for five seconds at least. And then I release. If you notice any bitting edema, this is an indication of congestive heart failure, but there is no, uh, no indication here, so it's normal. Then we're going to check on the dorsalis pedis pulsation. Now, how do I do that? I'm going to ask, uh, ask the patient to, um, uh, to point his big toe towards his face. Okay. Now we're going to notice the extensor hallucis longus uh, tendon. Lateral to it, on here, you're going to feel the dorsalis pedis artery. And that's it. And now I'm gonna help the patient to cover up. Thank you. And I'm gonna thank the patient. Thank you, Wafi. You're welcome, doctor. And I'm gonna wash my hands. Thank you. To summarize the results, the inspection was normal. There were no scars in the patient. And also the percussion, we've done it, it's normal. We've ruled out the pericardial effusion. And also in the palpation, there were no thrills. There were no heaves and the uh, apex speed was not displaced. Uh, and also for the auscultation, it was normal. S1 and S2 were preserved. S3 and S4 uh, were not heard. And also the murmurs are not heard. Thank you.